it's next to worthless to really talk about immigration in terms of GDP because GDP, which is the size of the whole economy, is not really what we care about, right? What we really care about is GDP per capita. We care about how much each one of us gets as income. And there, the impact of immigration is sort of, seems to be negligible from the, from the data that we have. So one way to think about that is to think about whether you would rather be living in India or living here, just in terms of your, your uh, material well-being. And India, in terms of GDP, is bigger than us, but in terms of GDP per capita, we're way ahead of them. So you'd rather be in a rich society than a, than a big society. So policies that are just aimed at bringing more immigrants in so that they can boost GDP, to me, make very little sense. The immigration literature, when we look at trying to see what happens to immigration and how it affects wages, how it affects income per capita, the best evidence we have is it has pretty small effects. It's not big negative effects. It's not job destroying or job stealing rather. It's not wage flattening. It's not that you bring in immigrants and everybody loses. Um, but on the other hand, it's not like bring in immigrants and your economy will grow magically either. It's a pretty neutral outcome. It's an interesting question of whether immigration really raises the per capita income of the people who are already here before the new immigration arrives. The mass of, of economic evidence on this, the empirical evidence, suggests that the answer is not much. It doesn't, it doesn't drop it. It's not like we bring in immigrants and you worry that they're going to make us all low-wage workers, but it doesn't raise it a lot either. And there are sort of famous examples. The most famous example in the economics literature happened when Castro, in about 1980, uh, basically opened his gates and said anybody can leave who wants to and that was called the Mariel boat lift because they they left from from Mariel I think in in Cuba they were picked up by this flotilla of people coming across from Florida and and a big portion of them ended up in Miami in fact they increased Miami's population by seven percent in a five-month period and then when you look at that there's a famous study that looked at that to see what happened to wages and employment, so essentially the components of per capita income, and they, within about three years they'd gone back to where they were. So it had virtually no impact, even in the sort of medium term. And that has been sort of reaffirmed in a lot of other studies since. And so that is sort of the way economists look at immigration. It's not going to send your GDP per capita skyrocketing, but it's also not going to depress it. Immigrants uh, have come, we usually talk about immigrants coming in sort of cohorts or waves. We think about them entering at different, different time periods and then we track them through and see how they do in the economy in the years following. In the years uh, leading up to say about the early 1980s, um, immigrants did pretty well. They entered at earnings that were below the ones of the people who are already here, the, the people born here and the earlier arrived immigrants, but they caught up pretty quickly. Then in the 1980s, that seemed to, to break down. They were starting to enter at much lower entry earnings and took longer to catch up. And that happened, that persisted through the 80s and 90s. And then in the 2000s, when in fact, things started getting better in the Canadian labor market, probably having a lot to do with the resource boom, immigrants started to do sort of relatively better as well. Um, a lot of that seems to have to do with a lot of the, the falling behind in the 80s and 90s had to do with the change in the immigrant composition to some degree. So it was about half of it was because we were starting to draw more and more immigrants from countries that, uh, which were not primarily English or French speaking and where it was harder to transfer your credentials from those countries. But the other half of it was that in fact that was a bad labor market time for all new, new entrants. So if you look at what was happening with young people in those periods, their wages were falling farther and farther behind what their sort of fathers or their older brothers had been, right? And so the combination of those two led to declines in the earnings for immigrants over those periods. And then there's been some catching up in recent years. It's been getting somewhat better.